r slash ask reddit redditors who rage quit a job without thinking what was the last straw call center inbound sales they told me i needed to have higher sales numbers and gave me training materials tools to help it suggested that if the customer wanted only one service we offered that i add on other services after the call had ended and hope the customer didn't notice i questioned this and they said that is how dave has the highest sales for the past six months and i should follow his example eee no it was a wednesday i got a call from my mom when i was at work to tell me that my dad took a turn for the worse and maybe had a day or two left to live i immediately went to the company owner small business and told her the situation and I really needed to leave right away since he lived a few hundred miles away. She told me she understood but, since I was working on some important projects, I should just come in on Saturday since he should be dead by then. I said okay, turned around, walked to my desk, deleted all my personal files from the computer, left my badge and keys on my keyboard, and walked out. Dad passed on Friday, and I turned off my phone that night until the following Wednesday or Thursday while I spent time with my family. I already hated the job and the owner for other reasons and found a new job a few weeks later. So I can't say I regret anything. Edit. Thank you everyone for your kind responses. This happened a few years ago. My father had dementia for a decade before this so we were all prepared for it. Not that it made it easier. But the wounds have healed and I find I'm able to remember the good times with him more now than I did when he was so sick. I'm doing excellent nowadays. But really appreciate how much concern some people have for a total stranger's well-being. That is seriously ducked up how insensitive she was. You were right to duck them over. And my condolences for your loss. The owner was very strange. Sometimes she would be the sweetest lady in the world. Others she was a total maniac screaming at employees for being incompetent and otherwise totally unprofessional. I was already looking for another job at this point. But this incident helped speed up my departure. So, the building my job was in closed down at 9pm. Everybody except security had to get out so they could shut everything down. One of my supervisors, I had 8 of them, yes it was like office space, kept scheduling me until 9.30pm. I repeatedly brought us up at the end of the night, and was always told no, that's just a mistake, you need to leave. Fast forward 3 months, I get called into a disciplinary meeting. The reason? I kept leaving early. I had like 8 attendance points from leaving early because one of my idiot bosses, who worked in the same building and definitely should have known when it closes, couldn't figure out how to schedule. I explain my side, which is pretty ducking obvious. And they say they'll hold off on any disciplinary action while they look into it. A couple days later they told me they weren't going to remove those attendance points. I told them to shove it up their ass. Walked out. And went to a concert with some of my, now former, co-workers. Attendance points are complete horseshit in an office setting. Unless you not being in at very specific times prevents someone else from doing their job it serves no purpose. It's just a bunch of shit scare tactics and another bogus reason to fire you if they dislike you. That last part. That's exactly why it's there. To cover their butts if when they fire you for cause. Even in it will states. Good luck firing anyone without paperwork. Unemployment insurance is coming to collect. My boss came back from his 30th smoke break that shift. Saw me taking a breather after I cleaned the entire kitchen on my own. And told me to stop being so unproductive. Duck you, Matt. Edit he worked in the pizza hut inside a branch of the big red grocery store. God that is such a common thing I feel. Wanna take a smoke break? Fine. Wanna get off your feet for 10 minutes and decompress? Duck you. A good friend of mine literally started smoking just to get breaks from work. Boss not doing payroll before leaving on a business trip and leaving it to the poor office manager to tell people they weren't gonna get paid on time. I walked out of the staff meeting saying I'd be back when paychecks arrived. By the time I got home I was mad enough to call my ops manager back and quit. Why didn't the boss do payroll? Stated answer was printer toner cartridge at home was empty. Guess he'd never heard of writing checks with a pen. My printer ink is low so y'all don't g paid. K by WTF. What a shit thing to do to people. I had a boss who paid us late. 
He wanted to just pay everyone for both pay periods after the following period. I was a shift manager and knew that some of our employees had kids and shit and that they wouldn't be able to make it two weeks without pay. So I wasn't having that shit. Told the guy that he had three days to get everyone paid or I would file a complaint with the labor board. And that if a single one of my co-workers kids went hungry he'd be on the news before the week was out. Went home and wrote the press release and emailed it to him. Everyone got paid on Monday. Normal payday was Friday. He borrowed money from his dad Saturday morning to deposit with a staffing company and then paid extra to have our checks overnighted. Tried to get him to spring for a free meal for everyone and their families but he said he was already out too much from overnighting the checks. I rolled my eyes but let it go. I started work in a bar in town and was told to be at work at 7pm for my first shift with the manager providing me with a typed timesheet showing my new working hours. Went home and had a cat nap. At 5pm my new manager calls me asking where the hell I am and telling me I need to come in now. I referred him to my timesheet which stated I was to be in at 7pm. To which he told me the timesheet doesn't define matter. You do what I tell you. Hearing this I politely told him that I would not be in tonight or ever. Good night and went back to my catnap. Good on you. Where the duck do these people crawl up from? What did he expect? Based on numerous stories from people in the food industry, he may have expected his workers to sit around all day off the clock just in case it got busy enough to have them work. I've also heard of waitresses being taken off the clock for one hour so it's not even worth going somewhere else while they wait. And of course you can't work a second job if you need to be on call at any moment. I worked for a restaurant for 2 weeks that refused to teach me anything but berated me regularly for not knowing how to do anything. One day, at the daily pre-meal meeting, my boss told me that you are complete and total shit and you'll always be shit. I waited until they got busy that night, then went the duck home and never came back. You're lucky you got out early, it took me 9 months for me to leave a job like that. Plus I never understood how they could berate you but not teach you how to do the job in the first place. Most jobs expect you to learn on site about everything, which is basically them saying, we don't document how we do shit around here, but we know if you don't do it the way we arbitrarily set it. I learned this same concept when I was in retail. The more willing and helpful you are to your co-workers and managers, the more they screw you. There's a phrase for this, no good deed goes unpunished. When I first heard it, I thought it was just someone being edgy ironic clever. No. It's an actual thing. The default situation of how the world works is, if you go out of your way to do something extra, that thing has now been added to your list of responsibilities. Nothing else has been taken off. No compensation has been added. You just gave yourself more shit to do. The moral of the story is never try agree beforehand what your reward will be, preferably in writing. Deserving better isn't the same as getting better, or never try. That's a viable strategy. Two. Worked at Best Buy in high school. Some people from a different store transferred over and one of them took over scheduling from my supervisor. She gave me a total of 10 hours a week down from my usual 30-40. I had to save 2 checks just to pay my shitty cheap cricket phone bill with those hours. I complained to my sup about her scheduling and they raised me to about 15 hours. I couldn't understand why or what I had done to get cut so much. When my birthday came close I reminded her constantly to not schedule me that day which shouldn't have been a problem considering my shit hours. She told me constantly not to worry, schedule comes out and that's the one day I am scheduled a full 8 hours. I try to contact her and they tell me she's on vacation and I can't change my schedule. I called to quit that same day, then later I find out that the manager who I called when I quit had been snuggling money from the store at the moment I called her and was leaving the city. She never told anyone I called to quit. The manager who I called when I quit had been snuggling money from the store awesome mental image of her hugging stacks of bills and making lovey dovey noises. I had something similar happen when I transferred from one GameStop to another. It had been approved by corporate 8 months in advance. They demoted me from third key to cashier. Despite saying I'd transfer into the same position. And I went from 30 plus hours a week to one 3 or 4 hour shift. I talked to the manager to see what was up. And he called me an entitled punk and told me I'd take what I was given. I just sort of left. Six years later, I'm managing a gas station. 
and he applies for work. My boss hired him and he's still a cashier at the gas station 4 years after that. Apparently he had gone to jail for selling pills but right after I quit. I wasn't rude to him though, because killing people with kindness is more my style. IT manager here, was working for a company that didn't consider us a real department. Lots of things leading up to this, but the last straw was an announcement that a satellite office was being shut down, and any employees that could would relocate to our office. We, the IT department, found out about this at the same time as the rest of the company. Months after the decision had been made, nobody told us anything, and this would involve obscene amounts of extra travel hours, and stress as we accommodate the moves, the infrastructure, and everything else involved with such a move. I left in the middle of the announcement. Follow up, my boss, CFO, threatens me to fire me if I don't do the work, lol, can't fire someone who's already quit, taps temple, then the CEO calls me and asks me back to negotiate, I agree to come back for 6 months if I get a 25% raise for myself and my entire team. After 6 months, I left and they laid off everyone else. Respect for not looking out for only yourself. Totally, and those guys busted their ass. Plus, that was the one piece they, my bosses, were going to fight me on. Like, they gave me another 25k without blinking, but hemmed and hawed about giving my guys like an extra $4 hour? Duck off. I worked on a farm throughout high school for a very wealthy couple. The husband was a successful commercial real estate agent, and the wife trained dogs to do hunt and field tests. I primarily worked for the wife assisting in training the dogs, but as it was a farm, I did various things for the husband as well. The husband was a raging alcoholic who would get pissed if you wouldn't share a drink with him when offered. When his wife was out of town participating in competitions with the dogs, I would have to drive over to the farm multiple times a day to feed the horses, clean out their stalls. ETC ETC and I would often run into him, but I tried to avoid it when possible because he made me uncomfortable anyway I was like 17 and it was summer, so I accidentally slept through my 6am alarms one morning and didn't get to the farm until around 8 to feed the horses and clean out their stalls, not like it mattered, horses can't tell time, the husband was there and had already been drinking as I could smell it on him. And he started laying into me about being so late he told me I was a poor white trash piece of shit and if my parents let me oversleep for my job then they're even worse white trash pieces of shit and I won't ever amount to anything just like them. Yada yada. I told him he could take care of the horse shit himself and that I quit. And as I was leaving he was yelling at the top of his lungs that he would find me and kill me. I never went back. Did he kill you? Been 4 hours. OP dead. Back in college I delivered food, I worked all the time, picked up shifts and was highly valued. Corporate wanted to have a front staff meeting and the managers didn't communicate it to the employees, so literally no one showed. I was working at the time of the meeting so I saw the managers get dreamed by corp. They rescheduled the meeting for the following Saturday morning, which happened to be the day after my birthday and one of the few days I requested off. I told them I wasn't going to make the meeting and they got all huffy puffy about how they would have to do something if I didn't come. This happened at the end of my lunch shift and I just said duck it, called a local pizza shop, set up an interview, and didn't show up for my evening shift. They called and were all we can figure something out and I said nah, I'm good. I probably could have just toughed it out because the managers typically only lasted 4 months or so, but I had enough of this dude's shit by then. Did you get the other interview? Yep. Started there the following week. My aunt got me a job as a tech in a chemical plant. As I was young and stupid I told the guy who was supposed to train me that I got the job through my aunt. He decided to haze me. After the first shift I already almost decked him as he would handily forget to tell me things and would berate and belittle me all the time. The second shift it continued and while I was working on a pipe he didn't close it as he was supposed to do. If I hadn't been aware of the rumbling and rolled away I would have been blasted by a jet of boiling steam. Went to the team leader. He said I was overreacting but he proposed to move me to another shift. I quit. My aunt was pretty upset with me until she heard, through the rumor mill, that the guy indeed had done what I said he did. 
the second shift it continued and while I was working on a pipe he didn't close it as he was supposed to do. If I hadn't been aware of the rumbling and rolled away I would have been blasted by a jet of boiling steam. This guy tried to murder or maim you. You should have gone to the cops. It would have been his word against mine. He would just say it was my responsibility to close off the pipe. Even so, I just wanted to get away at that point. I was interning at a human rights non-profit. I was so happy to be there. However, the people in my specific office were awful. We didn't start until 10 and they would always manage to be late. And I didn't have a key to the office. I got there an hour early because that's how the train time lined up. And I was fine waiting the hour until 10. But they wouldn't get in until 11 some days. Or even 12. Did they ever notify me when they were going to be late? No. Did I ask them to? Yes. On my last day, it hit 11 and I asked when someone would be there. They said 11.30. It hit 12 o'clock and I just left the items I had with me of theirs outside the door and walked away. I sent an email to them saying I can't deal with this anymore. And they never responded back. Edit. At. Did you get paid for your hours after 10 each day? My bet is at a non-profit. Even a human rights non-profit does not pay its interns. I worked for a pharmacy for almost two years and we had hired a second replacement pharmacist who requested a weekend off each month. Well when the pharmacist took his weekend they filled his shift with a floating relief pharmacist. Well there was a particular one. We will call him Jim. Jim had been a pharmacist for 40 plus years and had his own way of doing everything. Long story short this guy didn't keep up on workplace training. New systems anything. Instead he would sit around and work as slowly as possible. And when you asked him for anything he would pretend he didn't hear you. When the customer would come to pick up their script and it wasn't filled. He would legitimately blame the person he was working with in front of the customer saying X didn't tell me. I told the main pharmacist if they schedule me with him again I'm done. They did. I ghosted that company. Edit. Lots of triggered people because I called it a pharmaceutical company. When I typed farm into my phone pharmaceutical was the first thing that popped up so I clicked it. I was in a store that distributed drugs aka pharmacy. Not a company that produced the drug. Pharmaceutical company. I learned a valuable lesson today. Ah. I had this problem at a sandwich shop. I straight up told them if they schedule me with this lazy idiot again I will walk out. They did it again and he did nothing the entire shift again so I called them and told them I was leaving the keys with him and I'll be back on Friday for my check. I ended up staying and he was fired. They watched the cameras and saw he literally sat around for 70% of his shift. I was a truck unloader at Walmart. We unloaded freight into skids sorted by department. There were three of us who were new. Doing the best we can trying to memorize where the department skids are and hauling ass as fast as we could. The store manager came to check in on us and said we weren't going fast enough. To speed us up he pushed everything that was on rollers onto the floor. I walked over and gave him my badge and knife and left. Currently working in this position now. Your store manager was an absolute dong and looks like they had a hissy fit. We are constantly told to get the truck done ASAP but at least our managers here get that it can be slow going especially with new people. It takes forever to learn which skid is which considering they aren't labeled. Edit. I love how my most upvoted comment ever is bad mouthing my job. I know this company well. My friend told me about the job after he had started there. After a day or two, I decided I would just buy a tank of gas and keep it at home in the garage. Every day I would siphon a bit off into a glass bottle and take it to work. I would bust my ass aerating lawn and negotiating prices. At the end of the day, I would just refill the machine's gas. Some days I would keep all the money. Other days I would keep everything but $200, $300. So I could keep going. Within two weeks they got suspicious. But I thought, keep this gravy train rolling till they fire me. About two more weeks later, they confront me at the end of the day. Words were had but I stood my ground. Kept my cash and left. In the end, I had made some decent money and went and got a job at Home Depot. This was over 10 years ago. Dunno what company you worked for but this was Spring Masters in Canada. They have changed names several times since. I assume because of tax problems shitty reputation. They go by Canadian property stars now. The company is scum. 
and the people who run it are scum taking advantage of people who are desperate for money. I was in a position where I didn't need the job. But I feel really bad for the people who were working like slaves for them because they needed the money. They encourage stuff like running from house to house with this heavy machine. Never taking breaks because you would make more money that way. Not taking lunch, etc. Keep in mind this is while working sunrise to sunset in the summertime. I got in trouble for going to the bathroom. I worked at a call center. It was an emergency. And I followed protocol. Finished my call as best as I could. Wrote in the team chat that I would be switching to busy. Put my phone on busy and ran to the washroom. Which was on the other side of the building. Seriously. One washroom for a building of like 1500 employees and you literally have to walk like 1 kilometer to get to it. I took like 5-10 minutes tops. I can't emphasize enough what an emergency code brown situation this was. And when I got back. Put my phone back on. And got back in. I was reamed out in front of the entire calling floor. Easily 300 people on my contract. Because I couldn't wait the extra 2h for my assigned 15 minutes break. Next day I was resolved to quit without any notice. Talked to HR. My supervisor. And told them that today would be my last day and I'm out. Edit. I should note that morale company wide was horrible to begin with. People were just depressing. And we as employees were never supported. And always just given shit and told that we weren't doing well enough. The poop thing was the straw that broke the camel's back but I was on the fence for a while about quitting. Call centers are the worst. When I quit mine I walked out then and there after a particularly bad. And long. Call. I expected shit from customers. But management was the worst. They wouldn't give a guy time off for physio when he broke his foot. Another guy booked off the two weeks of his wedding and honeymoon months in advance. Got switched to a new contract. Lost his book time. And they would only give him the actual wedding day off. Expecting him to come in as usual the day after and onward. This place was a ducking mess. I was 18 years old. I took a year off between high school and university to work and save money. Had a part time job at a self serve gas station to earn a little spending cash as almost all of my full time job money was going to university savings. New assistant manager started. Instantly had a hate on for me and treated me like a lazy sob because I had arranged with the past assistant manager, the mom of one of my school friends, to work two slow week nights 10 hours per week. Every time I talked to the new assistant manager she tried to pressure me into taking shifts that interfered with my full time job. And she started saying that I wasn't a team player. It wasn't fair that the manager wouldn't change the shifts I'd agreed to. I needed to take more hours. Etc. Two months after new assistant manager started I got in a car crash. It wasn't my fault. I t-boned a lady who ran a red light, and the lady barely managed to get her car to the local police station where she filed a false police report stating that I ran that red light. While I'm at the police station, new assistant manager calls to ask me if I can come in 2 hours early, aka 45 minutes from the time she called. I apologized, said no, sorry, I can only come in for my regular start time. Dot. Assistant manager freaks out. Apparently everyone I work with says I'm lazy. I don't care about my job. I never do anything to help anyone out. I'm self-centered. She works hard but I don't appreciate her. On and on like that until I hang up on her. I show up at work 5 minutes before my regular time. Storming in the customer entrance rather than the employee entrance. Slam my key on the counter in front of a couple customers. Tell her I was in a bad not at fault accident and when she called I was trying to resolve the false police report that was filed about me. And that I refused to work another minute for that company as long as she was an assistant manager there. Assistant manager has a wide eyed look. And attempts to say something as I walk out the door and never return. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.